So with more and more reports regarding the regular iPhone 14 series getting the A15 chip, I thought I'd make a video explaining why Apple's doing this and why I think this is the right move. So let's delve into it. But first, make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. And with that being said, let's just talk in. So there are two main sources for this leak. The first one is Min Chi Kuo, a relatively credible supply chain analyst. But the second source is 9to5Mac, who's been really accurate as of late, with them giving us our first tidbits on the Mac Studio and the Studio Display before their release. So yes, because 9to5Mac says this could be the case, I do think this report is legit. So by the way, this report has been mentioned by another source in the past, and I believe I have covered it, but basically according to these sources, the regular iPhone 14 models could stick with the A15 chip, and only the pros get the upgrade to the A16. Now when I initially heard that first report, this made no sense, and I completely dismissed it. However, now thinking about it, and the fact we have more credible sources also suggesting the same makes me think this could be the case. And it's really because of one reason and that is the chip shortage. So Apple's done a pretty good job at handling the chip shortage for the most part, but they also have clearly been affected. I mean a recent example of this is the iPad Air because instead of getting the A15 like the iPad Mini 6, it got the M1 instead, and I'm assuming that's because there are supply constraints with the A15 chips, and they'd much rather allocate the A15 resources to their more in demand iPhone 13s. However, Apple had a large surplus of M1 chips since they've been producing them for over a year now, and so of course giving it to the iPad Air 5 was a relatively easy task. And so that's why they brought M1 to the iPad Air 5. And so I do think it's going to be a similar case here, because while the A16 staying on the 5 nanometer process, it is getting new CPU and GPU cores, and so because of that, TSMC might not be able to produce the amount of chips Apple needs for the complete iPhone 14 series. And even if they could give A16 to the complete lineup, I'm sure the iPhone 14 series will initially be out of stock, much like the iPhone 13 series was, and Tim did tell us that did result in a major loss in terms of revenue. And yeah, with the reasons to upgrade shrinking even further, I do think consumers can be put off if they can't upgrade on the spot and they have to wait three to four weeks to get their new iPhones. And so having these models readily in stock as soon as they launch is pretty key to be honest. And so if putting the readily available A15 chips in these iPhone 14s can dramatically increase Apple sales, I'm sure Tim's gonna go down that route. And another thing Apple loves is profit. You see TSMC is increasing the prices of their chips and this could dramatically increase the price of these iPhones. And while that puts Apple in a dilemma because they obviously want to maintain their high profit margins, but they also don't want to dramatically increase the price. Especially with the regular models, pricing is pretty crucial, so I do think the move to not use A16 chips might be a cost-cutting measure to keep prices relatively the same as the iPhone 13 series. Since to remember, the longer a chip is produced, the cheaper it gets to build, and so I'm sure the A15 would be much cheaper to produce, and honestly I'm sure many of you guys and most average consumers do not care about having the A16 chip, they would much rather have lower prices, and if giving us the A15 could bring down the 14 Max to 799, I'm all for it. However, I do want to say that much of the Apple Watch chips, there is a very good chance Apple could just simply rebrand the A15 as the A16 for the regular models, and then of course the 14 Pros get the A16 Pro chip. That does seem like a win-win because Apple can still flex this technically has a new chip in the marketing for the iPhone 14, but also they get to save money and also give us cheaper iPhones by reusing the A15. Also, I'm sure that Apple would love you to buy the Pros instead, and so having a different branding for those chips could incentivize most to get that, and especially with a ton of the rumored features 
coming to the pro models, I do think this makes sense. And to an extent, they already do this, since the pro models have an extra GPU core compared to the regular models. Now, if you're wondering about support and whether the iPhone 14 series with the same chip would actually get one more year of support compared to the iPhone 13s, I'm not too sure myself. Because of course, the last time Apple gave us a new iPhone with an older chip was the iPhone 5C back in 2013. Now this did lose support with the iPhone 5, so it did technically get one less year of support. However, the iPhone 2G and the 3G have the same chip, yet the 3G got one more year of support. And so yes, I'm not sure what's going to be the case with the iPhone 14 series. Now personally, I'm leaning towards one more year of support because we have heard about more RAM coming to the regular 14s, and this could be the reason they get more support because in the past, devices with the same chips but with more RAM do get more support, for example, the iPhone 6 with the A8 chip and 1 gig of RAM loss support with iOS 13, however, the iPad mini with the same chip, but more RAM, got way longer support and is still supported. And so yes, with these chips getting very, very good, I don't think they're going to be the bottleneck, it's going to be RAM, and the 6 gigs of RAM with the regular 14s might give it longer support. And yes, coming back to how fast the A15 is, that does bring me to another point why this makes sense, and that's because the competition is still miles behind the A15, and even the A14 from last year, so I do think there will be no issue with Apple reusing the A15 chip for the iPhone 14 series. And so yes, when the performance differences between these A series chips are very small in the first place, I doubt consumers are going to care about the A15 chip being reused with the iPhone 14 series. Anyways, those are all my thoughts guys. The only thing I'm still unsure about is whether we'll see computational photography upgrades with the regular iPhone 14s. Since to remember these features heavily rely on the new chip, and so with the regular 14s not getting that, does that mean the pros are basically getting all the new camera features? Well guys, let me know your thoughts on that and the reports as a whole in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video above on details regarding Apple's VR headset. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya peeps.